Hello friends and welcome to another edition of gardening distance learning style. So weird, but so wonderful. This week we're going to be learning all about some of my favorite garden pets. They have five hearts and no feet and the wiggle, wiggle our waste they eat. I'm talking about worms. Worms are a very special type of garden creature known as a decomposer. A decomposer is something or someone that breaks things down in an ecosystem. So a decomposer helps to break things down. We talked about that a bit in some of our fourth grade classes. We started learning about fungi, bacteria, and vertebrates. Um, and we started the very beginning of one of these experiments in second grade before we left. I'm a little nervous because we started a decomposition experiment that is living in my office. So we will see. <laughs> um, before we get started, though, diving into my worm bin, I figured we could start with just a few breathing cards. So pick your choice. <gasps> Pew! Bubblegum breathing! Okay, so for bubblegum breathing, you're going to take your bubblegum out from wherever you keep it. I keep mine behind my ear. Chew it a little. We're going to do three big deep breaths every time our bubble will grow. On the third breath, our bubble is going to pop and we'll be all finished. Are you ready? Breathe in. Two. Three, get ready to pop. Snake breathing. For snake breathing, it says you're gonna hold your hands together in front of your chest. When you breathe in, your snake is gonna wiggle its way all the way up. And when you breathe out, it's gonna so Let's do it two more times. Nice. Thank you, my friend. Okay, now that we've done our breathing and our brains and our bodies are ready for learning, are you ready to meet my wiggly friends? A few weeks ago, I took you on a tour of my backyard, which I've been very grateful for during this time. And one thing I showed you, if you remember, was the way that my house sorts their waste. So we had a trash can, a small trash bin that goes into landfill, um, and then we had two crates that we put our recycling in and the most exciting part was that we have two different bins just like this that we put our compost in. We sort our compost into two separate sections. Um, one is for our worm slash worm bin and um, also the scraps that go into our yard compost which I showed you a little bit about few weeks ago um, and then the rest of the things go into a big green bin that we put on the street. Um, we sort the things into different bins because we're feeding what goes in this bin to some of my favorite garden creatures, the worms. Um, and so I wanted to tell you a little bit about the things that we feed the worms and a little bit about why we feed them different things. So. Let's get in the worm bin. <laughs> On my back porch, I have this worm bin that actually has five different layers. Um, so I'm going to take you through just some of the most active layers right now. When I take off the top of the worm bin, this is what I do every time I start. Ooh, there are a lot of flies in there. Um, this is the, the bin that I put all of our food scraps in. And it's the bin that you'll probably, if you dig down deep, find the most little creatures. <laughs> I found a jackpot here. They're really loving it. Let's see. Ooh. When I am going to put different veggies and fruits and food waste into this part of my worm bin, I have to be really, really careful. You and I have lungs that we use to take in air to breathe in oxygen. 
but worms don't have any lungs. So they're actually breathing through their skin. Imagine if you were breathing through your skin and you rolled over something that was really sour, like a lemon. Think about that feeling that you have when you eat a sour lemon. When I eat one, my lips kind of go. Imagine if your whole skin felt that sourness. It wouldn't like it. Or think about how you feel when you are near fresh onions or you are cutting fresh onions. Um, does it make your eyes water? It makes mine. It kind of stings a little bit. Imagine if your whole body could feel that stinging. So we have to be really careful when we're feeding worms um, what kind of things we feed them, knowing that they breathe through their slimy bodies. Wow. I really like how they're, I found a lot of them in this eggshell. The eggshell is kind of like a harder texture. So it doesn't break down as easily as some of these squishier foods like the apple or some different leaves. One thing that eggshells do for worms, <laughs> they work as kind of like a, a bedding for them, which is really cool. When I go down to the next layer of my worm bin, let's see. There won't be as much food down there, oops, but there will be soil that has trickled its way down. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you five worm facts. One, one, there are more than 180 types of earthworms found in the United States. Two. Worms have five hearts. Three. Each worm is both male and female, both producing eggs. Four. A baby worm emerges from its egg teeny tiny but is fully formed. And number five. The skin of an earthworm exudes a fluid that makes moving through underground burrows easier and helps to keep the skin, the skin moist. In Australia, one species of worm can shoot their fluid that, that is around their body as far as 12 inches away from their skin and pores. Thank you for coming to this episode of Worm Facts. Hey, how did you get here? Let's take a peek. So in this layer of my worm bin, we actually have the product of what happens when the worms eat the food. It's, <laughs> it's really, really squishy and muddy. I wish that you could smell it or feel it. This is actually what I have in my hands. <gasps> worm poop. <laughs> when the worms get all up in my food waste, they actually are taking in the food. They don't have any teeth, so they're not chewing it. But little, there's a little tube that goes all throughout their body that's rough, kind of like sandpaper. And it grinds up the food and mushes up the food and turns it into this sort of brown, <laughs> this sort of brown dirt. Um, but something about this dirt is that it's full of different nutrients. It's full of different things that are really, really good for the soil, for our plants, and for us when we eat those plants after they're able to grow. So worms are a wonderful example of a decomposer. They take the food that you see in this bin and they munch, 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 poop, 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 and they turn our waste into nutrients into soil that we can use again in the garden. I am going to feed my worms with you right now from my house's compost bin. So take a peek, try to guess what I'm going to feed these wormy friends. Today I'm going to feed them some <gasps> watermelon rinds. 
I think they'll like them because they're soft on the inside, so easy to break down, but on the outside, a little bit trickier. I wonder if they'll still be in here when I check next week. I'm going to feed them some, ooh, the bottom of a cauliflower. I'm going to feed them, <gasps> should I feed them this onion skin? No, that would stink because they breathe through their bodies. I'll take that out. Mmm, some peanut shells. Ooh. Some grapes. And I think that's it. I try not to feed my worms too much because think about how small their bodies are. It would take a lot of worms to break this down, right? I don't want to fill their plate more than they can handle. So for the rest of this, I'm going to um, take it to my compost bin in my backyard. Thank you for joining me in feeding my worms. If you would like to learn more about worms, check out this week's activity in the gardening tab on the CIS Distance Learning website. Now, I'm going to leave you with one funny blooper. Check it out remind you that if you look in the gardening tab on the distance learning piece of our CIS website, then you will find a whole lot of lessons and ideas and videos of how you can learn more about my wiggly pets and maybe oh, one landed on my laptop.